Hello YouTube, it's Sean from the Pompey Games Room. So, back with another episode of First Thoughts. Um, so, it's my first ever look at a Sega Saturn game. So, today we're going to play a much um, sought after game, I would say, probably on the Saturn. So, we're going to see what it's all about in Clockwork Night. So, let's now hand over to the footage that I recorded earlier and take a look. Right, so we've got the Saturn set up. So, uh, let's do some standard things here. The game's already in there. Uh, as you can tell, there is no battery in my Sega Saturn, so let's boot it up, and off we go. So, this is my first ever look at um, Clockwork Night for the Sega Saturn. Um, quite looking forward to playing it, because I've heard a lot of good things about it. It's supposed to be one of the better games on the Saturn, um, one of the games that people really want to get hold of for the system, and it was one that I really wanted to get hold of. Um, I'm sort of expecting it, like many of the uh, early CD-based games, to have a really long intro. Um, it looks like we're at the start of it now, so uh, let's just uh, sit back and watch this. I'm not going to skip it, even though it could end up going on for a little while, this. So, to be honest, it's a I don't know whether this is just looking back now, but um, it looks very, very blocky. Um, but still, I think this would have really blown you away back in the day, um, looking at it. But um, I'm expecting it to be a bit like Toy Story for the Mega Drive or SNES, to be honest. So, we'll see how it goes. Right, so we've got a brush there, by the looks of it. A very empty toy box. And some rather alarming looking characters. as well. Pretty decent looking characters though. I presume that's the main character. I believe he's called Pepper, the main character. He does have a really long name, but uh, there's no way I could pronounce that. So I suppose that's who we're rescuing in the game. Um, I haven't really done an awful lot of research on this title, I've got to admit. Um, all I know is that you are a clockwork knight, hence the name of the game, and uh, it's basically, it plays very similar to um, the Donkey Kong Country games in that it's a 2D sprite that's sort of in a 3D um, digitalised world, um, and it looks pretty impressive when, well from the box, it looks pretty impressive. Um, I won't bother showing you the screenshots because obviously we're going to see them in a minute. So. That is the main weapon there that you can see. It's a turning key, which I suppose charges up the, uh, the knight. Just wonder what that thing is. Is that coming through a vent? That, those footsteps. I tell you what, for an intro sequence this long, it better be a good game. It's bloody annoying music. So, this was released pretty much right at the beginning of Sega Saturn's life. Um, in 1995, I believe it was July 1995. Um, to be honest, I think for an early release game, it's very, very impressive. Um, just looking at that intro scene there. Um, it's a bit long, but the CD-based games in the early days used to be a lot like this to show off that they could actually do CD capability. They had so much room to use on these discs compared to cartridges that um, they came up with pointless intro scenes like this. And, uh, yeah, they're loving it. So, hopefully, they've just ridden off. So, does that mean we're just about to start the game? Or. Okay, it looks like we're at the intro screen. So, Clockwork Night, here we go for the Sega Saturn. So, let's press start. Presume start, yep, yeah, start does the button. So what are we going to have now? A bit of a long loading screen. Okay. Press start button. Pretty self-explanatory. Yeah, you see Clockwork Knight and uh, Pepper Rucci's Adventure. That's the name. and I believe it's just Pepper that they call him. So that is his real name, the main character, who I presume is in the background, just raises his eyebrow. So we've got start and options. Look at that, eh? Background. 
let's have a look at options. So I'm just checking the recordings, that's five minutes, five minutes of the intro and we haven't even gotten into the game yet. Um, right, so, there's the buttons, very simple, jump is A, attack is B, and jump is C, so six button pad and they've only utilised three functions. So, let's click on the start button and see what happens. So I'm expecting this to play a lot like Toy Story for the Mega Drive and the SNES, but um, could be surprised, I doubt it. Let's have a look anyway. So, I wasn't expecting. Is this a level or is this a. So, we're in Betsy's room. I'm not even pressing anything here. It's. Ah, right, okay. It's a bit like Donkey Kong again, like I said. Um, it's walked me to the first level. So, here we go then. Clockwork Night. It's taken a long time to get here. And first impressions the character movement's pretty good. We've got a time up at the top, so we've got five minutes to do each level. Uh, I presume that's two lives, and then top right is a zero. Um, but, well, I presume that stuff got to collect, so let's get going. So, A is jump, C is jump, and B is attack. So let's get going. Oh, and that can just jump in the background. So, right, okay, so. I've just realised that if you double press forward, it's run. So if we pick up this winding clock, it's having to jump in the background again. Oh, it is. Well, first impressions, I mean, it's it's pretty smooth gameplay, to be honest. There's a Sonic-esque invisibility thing by the looks of it. Um, so we've got to collect these stopwatches. Is this what you've got to collect throughout the level? I'm, I'm sure it is. But uh, walk on these platforms, what this is all about. So, looks like this is a. Oh! I mean. Uh, I don't know how many hits you get between dying, but um. Okay, and a box, jump inside of it, maybe this is a bonus. So, we're on a bonus stage straight away. So, if it is a bonus stage. So it, it controls pretty smoothly, to be honest. You can look up and down. Um, by pre double pressing forward, you run. Um, you've actually got a longer, much longer jump when you uh, when you run as well, um, as opposed to just pressing the A or C button. And, I don't know if you're hitting the things though, that is the problem. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's pretty impressive. Um, coming from sort of a Mega Drive or a SNES, you'd be pretty blown away by these graphics, but like I said, it, I actually think Donkey Kong looks better than this. I don't know if it's just me, um, but uh, I don't actually think Donkey Kong looks much better than this. Um, it might just be me, but I don't know. It's a good game, but uh, annoying music. <laughs> and really, really odd characters as well. And, I don't know how many hits you get. I don't know if you can pick up power-ups and stuff. Um, I mean, the levels are pretty nice, so I'm not going to lie. Um, they well detailed in the background, and they do scroll as you walk. Um, so it's not the same. Ooh. Oh. Ah! <laughs> So, the building blocks. Okay, there's no save point. The building blocks really uh, hindered my progress there, so... We're still on the first level here, and I've already died once, but uh, I've never played this game before, and that's what this game series is about. Um, okay, right, let's get out of Jack in the Box this time. Because we know we had the problems that guy last time. So, we've got the invisibility thing again. Let's not bother doing that this time. Let's, let's just run this way. Yeah, it's quite cool, I mean, it's pretty, pretty basic if you'll just, ooh, okay, right, so the houses fall down, it's nice to know, so let's just fall it. Okay, really going to try this one. Come on, fall down, there we go. 
It's a really odd enemy, it looks like something out of Factory is not included. I don't know if you guys are. Oh, cool. Everyone's familiar with that film, it's a classic. But, uh, it's very, very weird. It looks like they've got little forks to uh, smash you. But um, yeah, I think, to be honest, this game wouldn't look out of place on a SNES or a Mega Drive. Um, for my very limited time that I've played Toy Story um, on the Mega Drive, uh, I'm saying it's probably as impressive um, as this. Um, but as a game for a system, I mean, when it first came out, this would have been pretty impressive. Um, not one that I'd necessarily buy a system for, but yeah, it's impressive nonetheless. I mean, it's up there with the PlayStation releases that were out at the beginning of its life. Um, once you learn the rhythms of these levels, I think you'd be pretty engrossed in it. Um, nice, so. Oh. Okay, so that's a bit like Super Mario by the looks of it. You've got to do a bit of a run up and then sort of jump and see where you land. So, anyway, um, yeah, my opinion, I think Donkey Kong looks better. It's a game that heavily inspired this clockwork, um, this clockwork game. Um, so, I presume we're going to walk on to the next level now. We're still in Betsy's room, there must be different theme levels. Um, it's worth noting that I think there's actually 15 levels on this game, or um, 15 worlds or something like that. It's quite a, quite a long game, apparently. Um, I'm in two minds about it, really. It's a game I've been looking forward to playing. Um, maybe that ball gonna... Ooh, we've got a clock that spits bits and bobs. Not sure what that was. But, um, jacking boxes really know how to push your buttons, don't they? Oh, like those clocks. Don't trust them. Don't trust the way they move. Right, so we've got more items falling. Any second now. Ooh. So, this um, this game usually costs anywhere really from five to ten pounds. It's quite a sought after Saturn game, um, and it was a game that I was actually quite looking forward to getting hold of. Um, I can see why really. The appeal's there, it's a, it's a nice sort of clunky game to play. Um, I do think you could get very, very uh, bored with this. Um, it's a bit repetitive as you go on. I mean, boxes keep falling down, there's, there's nothing really that new. Um, controls are pretty tight, um, pretty responsive. Good detail on the character. Um, so we've got another bonus level here. Good detail on the character, but nothing special really. Um, don't know about this game. Difficult. It's the first Saturn game I've ever done on this series, um, so I don't really want to slate it, but I think, you know, hype-wise, it looks great, but um, I don't know, it's something I think they could have done on a Mega Drive at a push. Maybe it was something they were originally planning for a Mega Drive. Um, I'm not too sure of. Um, but, uh, it's, um, it's difficult. I can't really tell you what... Uh, Okay, you can pick items up by holding in B. Nice to know. Um, I would say it's pretty impressive, to be honest. Looking back, um, it's, it's, uh, it's one of those games I think that you could really get into. Um, there is, it's actually worth noting that there is a number two to this. I never realised um, this game usually sells anywhere from five to ten pounds, um, and I've actually heard that. Uh, it's um game following it sells very similar. Uh, and it, it's a continuation on this story. So effectively, uh, if you like this story and you like the way it ends, you'll probably like number two. Um, I can't see myself wanting to pick up number two though. Um, don't get me wrong, it, it's an impressive looking little game. Um, but uh, it's not something, to be honest, that I would go out and buy a Sega Saturn for. Um, you get just as much enjoyment out of, say, like a Toy Story game or something like that. Um, it's, uh, it's a very, very sort of um, basic game, I'd say. Um, would it have been something that I would have bought a Sega Saturn for back in the day? I mean, I touched on this a minute ago, but I don't think it would be. I mean, there was other games at the time. I mean, the major selling game, sorry, as you can see, I'm really struggling to get hold over this here. As my 15 minutes approaches on this game which is just coming up now. So unfortunately that long intro sequence uh, 
really sort of stuffed us really. Um, I think I've got about 30 seconds left on this. Um, I mean, it's a bit of a puzzle of this game as well, by the looks of it. I mean, just by looking there, you have to push things, move blocks, and stuff like that. It's a. Uh, I think for a kid, it would be a pretty taxing game, but uh, it's nothing that's going to keep you right. Let's try and go for the last one. <laughs> Brilliant. So I, I presume throughout the game, you have to spell clockwork. Stands to be corrected, but uh, yeah. Anyway, this has been a first look at um, for me just to check the game actually worked. Um, it's been a first look at Clockwork Night. Um, worth saying that this game actually received rave reviews, a lot of 10 out of 10s when it first came out. So I mean, it must have been up there with something special back in the day. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, playing it now, I don't think it's aged very well. Um, okay, we've got a 3D boss. Maybe we'll try and stick with the boss here, and we'll see how this goes. But uh, um, let's deck him. Okay, I mean it's pretty impressive, don't get me wrong, but the uh, the bosses on Donkey Kong were pretty impressive, I thought. I quite like those. Um, so I presume it's all massive hat. So it's a thing wearing a monocle. But anyway, guys, sadly gonna have to leave it there as the footage ends. So, anyway guys, that's been a quick look at Clockwork Night for the Sega Saturn. It's an exclusive Sega Saturn game. It was released right at the beginning of the Sega Saturn's life in 1995, July. Um, it's a platformer, as you can see, and it's only one player. But um, definitely seek it out, guys. It sells between £5 and £10 usually. You can pick it up for a decent price. I think I picked mine up for £6, all in all, with free postage. Um, it's pretty good condition. Um, very, very acclaimed game, but I wouldn't really say it's anything to write home about. I'm going to rate this game probably 3 out of 5. Anyway guys, please feel free to comment, rate and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye.